Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Car Wash Magazine Live. As always, I am your host, Matt DeWolf, Editor-in-Chief of Car Wash Magazine. Hey, friends, if you were on last week, uh, you got a little bit of a sneak peek look at our um, Menu Matters episode. Uh, the week before that, we were talking about uh, the new brand that this magazine uh, has undergone, and so uh, that's super exciting. If you didn't catch that Menu Matters episode, it's a really great episode. I really uh, think you all should check that out. You can get that on your um, wherever you subscribe to your podcast. That's going to be the way to get the full conversation. A lot of really great stuff around uh, what we can be doing with our menus uh, in this industry. Uh, it's really kind of ramp it up a level and uh, really make things uh, more enjoyable for our customers uh, while also being more enjoyable for you. So make sure you check those out. Let's come back real quick. I wanna talk about uh, the brand um, that I mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago here. So it's right here, you can see it, right? That's the new Car Wash Magazine brand. Uh, we're taking that across all of our media properties. And so um, one of the other big things that is fun for me to talk about is that we've got an app, right? So if you are uh, just really chopping up the bit to make sure that you've always got the latest up to date information in the palm of your hand, wherever you might be, or if you just wanna to listen to podcasts in a, in a car wash specific environment, you can do that right here. This is the Car Wash Magazine app. Uh, if you're looking at this on a, a desktop computer, you can go ahead and scan that QR code and you can download that wherever you are. Uh, now, if you're listening to this, you, you can't obviously download anything. Or if you're watching this on your phone, it's a little hard to scan a QR code on your phone. So uh, you can go to your app store of choice and download that. Uh, we've got news, we've got features uh, from the magazine, we've got podcast episodes and uh, lots and lots and lots of video content for you all to consume. And so uh, download that and check it out. Let me know what you think. Uh, we also have friends coming up for you uh, here in a, a few moments. Some really interesting conversations. Uh, we've got some secrets that we're going to share uh, from Crew Car Wash. Uh, we're going to talk to Mr. Car Wash's John Lai. And we've got a uh, fun new segment for you uh, called Wade and Nick's Picks. We're going to get into that in just a minute. But before we do that, uh, let's get into the news real quickly, friends, because we did not have news last week. Um, a Big Dan's Car Wash down in Tampa, they've acquired two locations. That uh, my friends, if you're a football fan, is what we call a Tampa 2. Yeah, well, you know, I'm trying. We're going to bring jokes back. Don't worry. Don't worry. Um, so congratulations to Big Dan's. Uh, we've got Driven Car Wash, obviously always on the move. They've got 10 new locations that they've acquired down in Texas, plus more news on the way that I just received this morning. Uh, so we'll be making sure we post that for you as well. And then speaking of Texas, uh, our good friend Nick Lopez, uh, he was recently named to San Antonio's 40 Under 40, super well-received, uh, super well-deserving individual of that accomplishment. And so we're really looking forward to seeing what, what Nick does next. Uh, always keeping you on your toes. Great guy to be around. Great car wash professional. Um, so if you don't know Nick, you should, you should meet Nick. But we're going to get more from Nick uh, a little bit later in the show. We're going to have uh, Wade and Nick's picks coming up for you. But first, I really want to share with you I had the chance to go to Crew Car Wash's latest, um, latest grand opening up in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I got to talk to them. I got to get some of their secrets, and I'm going to share those with you right now. Hey, everybody. Matt DeWolf with Car Wash Magazine. We are here today uh, at St. Cloud, Minnesota. We get the uh, rare opportunity to talk to Spinner, uh, Crew's mascot. Spinner, so good to see you. Yes, yeah, awesome. So, okay, so tell me a little bit about what we've got going on. There's a lot of activity uh, here on the site today. You've got to be excited. Yeah, no, I, oh, you know, I love that. I love that insight. Um, tell me, what do you think has been most important in what you guys do to drive this kind of traffic? This is amazing. See, oh my God, so... Guys, that's the secret. That's the secret. You've heard it here first. Um, last thing for you, Spinner, I just want to know, what does it mean uh, to you to be part of Crew Car Wash? <laughs> awesome. It's, you know, I, it really is, like he said, all about the people. So thank you so much, Spinner. It's been great chatting with you, and uh, thank you for sharing your story. All right, so... <laughs> That's it. That is the secret to success from Crew Car Wash. No, uh, friends, in all honest um, 
honesty and transparency, we are going to have a conversation with some of the folks at Crew. We're going to have that for you probably next week, um, maybe the week after. We're trying to work that into the schedule. But I did uh, have a chance to talk to a lot of their team members. We're going to share some of that story with you. But in the meantime, you're going to have to just settle for um, the mascot secrets. You know, if you speak mascot, uh, you have all you need. You don't need to watch it anymore. But if you speak mascot, uh, if you don't speak mascot, it's a real easy language to learn. Just saying. Uh, okay, so I mentioned uh, Wade Keith and Nick Lopez earlier on in this program. We did a bit with them at the Car Wash Show uh, in Las Vegas in November where we had them walk around and kind of do a, a Wade and Nick's picks bit, right? So they kind of, what was interesting on the show floor? What did they see? We revived that. We've got the um, we've got Wade and Nick's picks coming to you from the Southwest Car Wash Association where they just were. Uh, so our special guest contributors are going to share one of their picks with you right now. Wade and Nick from Southwest Car Wash Show. We're coming back to you with some of our favorite vendors. You remember my good boy Wade? It's Nick. Please meet Matt from Promo Car Care. I found out about Promo Car Care actually through some other groups that I'm involved with, but the minute I met Matt, he showed me these incredible dash wipes that they came out with in the last three seven or, years. Seven years. Yeah. They are inexpensive, they are prolific, and they are easy to give something tangible to the yeah, customer. Absolutely. Yeah, so in our industry, we've learned through many case studies that over 40% of buyers are responding more to a tangible giveaway. Like, yeah, they love to get their tires shined and their triple foam and their rain X, but receiving a tangible item like a custom dash wipe really helps seal the deal with customer loyalty bringing them back for more so what uh, in what ways would you hand this out i know for our company we handed out for additional value items with the unlimited wash clubs but are, what are some other applications that you would suggest that people yeah so out? um obviously in our industry the top wash packages are the most profitable wash packages so if you are not currently handing out a tangible product for top wash that would be the first place i would start like, hey, let's start with your very top wash package and then move from there. Is there any part in the customer's journey where you would suggest handing these out? Oh, or yeah, yeah. Like, like at the pay stations or after the wash? Where would you suggest Yeah, this? I would say about 95% of our customers are going to hand them out at the pay station. And it it's improves that interaction with the customer at that point. Now, I see dash wipes and air freshers. What other products is it that you offer? Yeah, so one of our big seg segments in the last couple of years has been the premium wash kits. Um, so inside it has a dash wipe, it has a finishing towel and an air freshener. And so this would be used to incentivize that top wash package where maybe every customer is getting a custom dash wipe, um, your top wash would get the full package. I feel like we glossed over the air freshener part a little too quickly. Yeah. It's my understanding you guys do custom air fresheners yeah. as well. Yeah. So. The great thing about dash wipes, right? It's the best value promotional product in our industry. Air fresheners are the best promotional product in the industry. Um, you, when you go to Breeze Through Car Wash, their customers, by the tens of thousands, are hanging their logo from the mirrors and seeing it seven, ten times a day. And so is everybody else that's driving through the neighborhood in the parking lot in the drive through So the name recognition that a car wash is getting from a custom air freshener by far, there's no promotional product that can beat that. All right, there it is. Wade and Nick's picks coming to you from the Southwest Car Wash show. Uh, sorry I couldn't be there, friends. Kate, I see you uh, in the comments here. Uh, I'll get to meet you in Nashville. We'll connect in Nashville. But guess what? Uh, Wade and Nick picks, we've got another one of those for you probably next week here from the Southwest show that we recorded while we were there. And then uh, we've gonna, uh, we're going to dust that segment off, and we're going to keep that going throughout the year. We're going to do that again in Nashville at the Car Wash Show May 9 through 11. So hope to see you all there. And keep your eyes peeled for our special guest contributors, uh, Wade Keith from Breeze Through and Nick Lopez from Bubble Bath. So uh, without further ado, friends, we're going to get to the main event here. We've got a special conversation coming up for you with Mr. Car Wash's John Lai, and we've got... Uh, ICA CEO Eric Wolf leading that conversation. So I'm going to turn the microphone uh, over to those two now. Can you start us off, though, by 
On IPO day or the day before, you did this fantastic karate kick move where you jumped in the air. I mean, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> I should have prepped you, not fair, no, but thanks, thanks. No, the, uh, my, my kids said, Dad, the, the butter turn dance, that was like a 1980s dance, and so I need to upgrade my dance moves. But I uh, was impressed. I mean, set we, aside your age, you're a fit guy, but you know, I was yeah, impressed that you pulled that off. No, we, we were jubil jubilant. We were um, yeah. overwhelmed with emotion, and, and our entire team we're still actually riding on cloud nine. Right I bet. It's, it's been an amazing run. I bet. Well, for those who aren't maybe real familiar, can you talk a bit, give us the profile of the company, markets, stores, employees perhaps, and then we'll get into some of the stuff this year that's been so impressive. Sure, so um, I think not the worst kept secret, you guys, it's all publicly available information now, but we have 360 locations in 21 states, 66 uh, cities or MSAs. Uh, we're up to 6,500 employees now. Um, headquartered in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, and we've been on this kind of crazy growth trajectory of about 25% year over year for the last seven years. And as you guys can appreciate, all the growing pains that go with growing at that clip, we're experiencing them. Um, it hasn't been easy, it's been a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, in the overall scheme of things, while inside the industry you know, we have probably the most stores in North America, we actually see ourselves as really small. Mm -hmm. And our estimated market share, depending upon how you want to look at it, if it's number of stores or revenue or EBITDA, is under 5%. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're tiny. And our opportunity, our collective opportunity to grow our businesses is uh, it's kind of a wide open field right now. Well, not though to sell yourself short. I mean, you, what you've done with the company, what the company has done over this past year has just been incredible. I mean, you'll recall, um, months ago around the time of the IPO, I kind of listed off these seminal moments in the car wash industry. And right. this is the first pure play car wash, now publicly traded company we've ever seen. And so, can you talk a little bit about, we were, we were chatting before we went live, because John had served on the ICA board years ago. We've known each other for a while. And when you sit here, it hasn't been 100 years we've known each other, but the, the amount of change that's happened in five, 10, 15 years is unbelievable. So. Just give us a little sense from where you sit. What has this industry done? Did you, could you ever have seen where we are today beyond yeah. even Mr.? No, so I've been in the business for 25 years. Um, so real quick, Mr. Car Wash is not an overnight success story. It's taken us 25 years to get here. And a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, not to get too dramatic, but it's been a slow, kind of steady build, one store at a time, one leader at a time. and. Collectively, we've been able to kind of stitch this thing together. A lot of trial and error, a lot of mistakes made, um, but we've learned each successive store. And I will say, um, when you kind of zoom out and look at our portfolio, we've been very fortunate to be able to uh, acquire and partner with some legends in the industry right. that um, have taught us a lot. So in a very humble way, we, you know, we, we, we have a term called reverse synergies where oftentimes we're learning more from the business that we're acquiring than we're bringing to the table. And, and having that kind of mindset to look for all the good things that owner operators are doing so that we can incorporate them into our model. And so if, if you look at our trend line as a company, for the first, I'm going to say 15 years, it was relatively flat. And just in the last period, we've kind of um, turned up the knob a little bit and, and gotten there quicker. But um, it hasn't been without an amazing team. Some of them are here today. Uh, really honored that, that we've built, I think, a, a, one of the best organizations in the industry. Yeah, congrats to all of them, by the way. What a, what a great accomplishment and story. So how do you assess where this industry is today with your 25 year view and where we are? As we wrap up 2021, how, would you how do you describe this to those who yeah. may not be familiar? So we're all lucky, right? We're in a great industry, we're in a great space. The demand for our service is at an all-time high. Um, I think many of us are fortunate that the express exterior model, so when we first started, we were a full-service car wash company. And for those of you that run full-service car washes, you know how difficult that can be. Hard to scale, particularly. So the express exterior model, I think, has been a blessing, um, not just for us, but the consumers love the fact that they can get in and out very quickly. Right. So that convenience and speed card 
has really fueled and been the catalyst. And then you layer in the subscription-based membership model, which has also been the game changer for all yeah. of us. Those two forces combine. So you know that old adage, better to be lucky than good. So I think we're all good at, at our craft, uh, but we're also very fortunate that those two things came together. And then just more broadly speaking, Eric, you know, this is a huge, so 275 million cars in the US today, right? Um, car culture, um, the automobile for many Americans is more than just transportation. And so with, and this has nothing to do with COVID and what just happened during COVID, but um, most Americans prefer to drive their vehicle to get from point A to point B. And the fact that we're selling this feel good. So technically, when we went through the IPO, they had to stick us into a sector, right? So consumer discretionary, so non-staple, right, service. But the service piece of the equation got everyone really excited because it's hard to disrupt a service provider. So there's this, what they call an Amazon moat. Um, as we think about who could mess up the party that we're all enjoying right now, there's very few things that we can see. And trust me, we went through this intense poking and prodding through the lens of autonomous vehicles, sure. ride sharing, um, how, are there any kind of secular trends that could impact you know, how people view car ownership, electronic vehicles, which we, yep. we didn't see as a threat. Um, but given the size of this car park in the US and where we see this industry, we think we can, we collectively can double the size of, of our footprint without any point of maturation slash slowdown. And that's a pretty optimal, if you can double the size of your industry, that's it, which is why this show is so big, right? Right, absolutely. Well, and, and earlier today we were talking about how, and you'll recall some of these early consumer studies, right? Less than half of US car owners did it at a professional wash. Now it's 90%. So I mean, the number of cars, demand skyrocketing. I mean, a lot of, a lot of wind behind the sales of the industry. Huge. Yeah. Huge. So as you look ahead, so 360 right now, probably a few more before the end of the calendar year. What, you've been through this process of an IPO, this massive effort by you and your team. You're getting used to your quarterly earnings calls now, all the, all the yeah, stuff that comes yeah. with it, right? So when you look ahead to 2022, what are some of the priorities for Mr. Car Wash and for you? So let, let me just make a point. Our, our goal was never to be the biggest. It was to be the best and we're not the best. And so we subscribe to this theory of good to great, and the day you think you're great, the day you're washed up. So the continuous improvement kind of chip to our DNA is critical to us never being satisfied, always looking for ways to refine and make better, speed yep. things up, improve quality, et cetera. Uh, but, but as we look ahead to 2022, I think, and this is not news to, to the audience, the, this labor market that we're in right now is intense, right? So whatever cliche you want to use, the war for talent is, uh, I've never seen it more intense. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that midway through our journey, we, 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 it wasn't a light bulb moment, but it was this transition for our organization where early on we used to crack the whip and there was a lot of effective immediately's and um, we looked at labor through purely a cost lens and not so much a productivity lens. But when we realize that if you take care of your team members, pay them well, offer them good benefits, train and support them, create career path progression, and you're doing all those things, oh, and then create a nice culture where they feel good about themselves, you can create a really magical organization where the customer feels that in store. And it gets intrinsically more difficult the bigger you get. And so we're not perfect. You can go into any one of our stores and see an opportunity, you know, we're, you know, we're human, um, but I think the, the, our focus on people and, and continuously trying to raise that bar for them, and we're happy to pay top of market, we're happy to pay a living wage, because these guys are busting their butts and they're the ones that are you know, delivering the great results for our customers. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about people just for one second, if you don't mind, because I did notice in your most recent call there was a question posed to you and your response was, I'm waiting for someone to ask me about culture. Right. <laughs> and, and, and you can tell in many of your answers through that call, I mean, you, you cited things like your people's participation in the offering, yeah. the training investments you're making. So can you talk about what the IPO and, and more broadly what you're building means for your people and what reaction you've seen culturally and, 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 and in people's behavior and attitude? 
Yeah, so probably the question I get asked most often is how the hell are you guys running 360 car washes coast to coast? And my quick response is we're not doing it from the ivory tower. We've created an environment where our site leaders who are the most important position in our entire organization are the ones that are running that business. We reward them through our profit sharing model and just recently we've been able to provide them a piece of the pie. So we now, and I'm bragging here a little bit, but this is my victory lap. You know, we've been able to give over 800 of our team members a piece of equity, a meaningful piece of equity in, in Mr. Car Wash. And when you have an employee ownership uh, model, it becomes extremely empowering. And so we came to the table with a really motivated group. Today they're even more motivated because they have a piece of that pie. And, and we're creating wealth and financial independence for hundreds and hundreds of our team members. Yeah. All right, friends, there you have it. That is uh, just a little conversation with Eric Wolf, ICA CEO, and with uh, John Lai, Mr. Car Wash's uh, leading man over there. So they um, had some great uh, insight into the Mr. Car Wash story there for you. There is another probably 12 to 15 minutes of that conversation coming out on the podcast in just a few minutes here uh, as that drops at noon. And so if you want more intel, if you want to hear some more of that conversation, you do that anywhere you're getting your podcast content. And friends, we've got some big things coming up for you. We've got, uh, don't forget the last Thursday of the month here, we've got a big panel uh, coming up for you. We're going to talk some more marketing. And then we've got uh, that conversation with Crew Car Wash coming up. I'm going to go see a car wash here uh, tomorrow. We're going to film and take some car wash tour footage. So lots of tours, lots of content, lots of great car wash stories coming up. Remember, if there's a story that you have, or that you think we should cover, make sure you let me know. That's mdewolf at carwash.org. And friends, until next time, there's just one thing you've got to do when you're out there killing it, washing cars, and that is keep it clean.